Hi there and welcome to 272analytics.com's tutorial on how to carry out a cumulative distribution plot in Stata. In order to do so we need, we need to load some data to begin with. So I'm going to go ahead and use the web use command to pull out uh, SN, SHS, SHNG which is a housing data set that comes preloaded in Stata. And what this data set is, it's a, it's a demographic data set. One of the va variables that it includes is family income as measured for, uh, I believe it's the median family income in, uh, in the US states for the year 1980. And what we'd like to do is generate a histogram for this variable, which is uh, uh, family income, F-A-M-I-N-C. So let's start by describing that. And we see here that, yes, in fact, that's the median family income that we're interested in. And just to learn a little bit more about it, it looks like it ranges from about $14,600 up to about $28,000. We have a mean and a standard deviation for that. And if you like, we can go ahead and generate a histogram for it as well using the hist command, H-I-S-T. And we see the distribution there. Uh, interesting, right off the bat, this looks more like a Poisson distribution to me, um, just as a side note. Uh, so let's do this. Let's teach you use of the cumul command, which is C-U-M-U-L. So the first thing that we need to do before we do the cumulative distribution, we need to create a new variable to hold that information. And that is done by using the C-U-M-U-L, cumul command, followed by the variable for which you're attempting to get the cumulative distribution. There's a comma, and then here the command gen is telling Stata that you're creating a new variable. And in parentheses, I'm going to go ahead and call that cum. Uh, by the way, I'm following the same procedures as in the Stata documentation. So if you come across the same example, um, there's a reason for that. OK, so here's what we've done. Let's go back in and, and actually look at these data. Uh, family income is over here. And right here at the end, there's now a, a cumulative variable, C-U-M. Note that it doesn't proceed the way that we would expect it to. Um, Ordinarily, in a cumulative distribution, we'd start with the smallest number here, and as we go, we would finish with uh, with with one over here. So the span here would be from zero to one. We don't get that here. That's because we haven't sorted the data yet. Now, the sort is going to actually take place when we create the graphic for the cumulative distribution plot. Uh, although, if you wanted, you could sort the data earlier. Um, just in the data set before you get to the graph. There's really no need to do that. So the command that I'm using now to generate the cumulative distribution plot is just the line command. It's followed by the new distribution variable that I created, cum, which is itself followed by the variable of interest originally, which is family income, right? F-A-M-I-N-C, comma, sort. So sort does the work that I showed you that it would. And now we get something that looks like a, a cumulative distribution plot. Uh, for sure. So we see the dynamics here. We see that, um, you know, by whatever this number is around here, somewhere, uh, I guess around 23,000, we have uh, substantially close to probably 0 0.94, 0 0.95 percent of, uh, of the distribution is somewhere between uh, 14,600 and, you know, 20 some thousand dollars over here. Um, the fact that the distribution, cumulative distribution line becomes very flat here, uh, kind of tending towards one over a, a long span of income. It, it's just a way of identifying or, or sort of showing to you that there are relatively few states that have a high median income uh, sort of in that year. Uh, so that's how you, you, do, you do a cumulative distribution plot for one variable. It's a little bit more complex if you want to impose two of those onto uh, a single graphic, but I do want to show you that once again, using the examples in the Stata documentation. So let's go ahead and load a new data set. And just to be consistent, I'm going to say web use um, because we're going to invoke this from the web. Web use, city temp, comma, clear. Uh, the comma and clear basically tell Stata to go ahead and uh, overwrite, get rid of the ASIN HSNG data set that it currently has in memory and pull up city temp instead. So if we just quickly look at that, we see that we have temperature data for January and July, among other data, for regions and census divisions off the United States. As we can see here, we have average January temperature, average uh, July temperature uh, is what we're looking at there. 
So the first thing that we're going to do, because we are going to create uh, two cumulative distribution plots on, on one graphic, we need to go ahead and create two new variables following really the same procedures that we did earlier with the HSNG. So we're going to use the cumul command uh, twice, once for temp Jan and once for temp July, which are both variables within the data set that I just showed you. Afterwards, we'll use the comma and the gen command here and create two new cumulative distribution variables, which are cgen and cjuly. And when we enter those, uh, we you know when we put the commands in, we'll just push enter and run those. Now, there's a further step here, a stack command, which I'm just going to copy and paste in for you so you can see what it is. In this stack command, we are associating the new cumulative distribution for January with a temp gen and the same thing here for July and we are uh, we're kind of shaping them into a new data structure here which I've highlighted for you and we just enter that command and having done that we now create our new line with C Jan C July uh, on temp and it's sorted again because as I showed you earlier you need to get the sort done um, in order to make sure that the data line up the way that they should. And now here, as you can see, we have two separate uh, cumulative distributions. They're both running on temp, which is a variable of interest. And we see uh, the distribution for January is well to the left of the distribution of July, which is what we would expect, uh, hopefully, uh, depending on you know where we are in the hemispheres and all that. Um, and, and you can see some sort of interesting variations in the shapes here. Uh, you know, for example, in, uh, in July, we can see that uh, very large spans of the cumulative distribution are accounted for by pretty small jumps in temperature, whereas there's more of an angle here uh, to January. Uh, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and use uh, the scheme, uh, color scheme commands to, to change the colors of those graphics to uh, grayscale or you know some of the other options that we've also described on 272analytics.com. I hope this tutorial was helpful to you and I would like to invite you to visit 272analytics.com for access to all our free statistics tutorials in Stata, SPSS, R, eViews, and Minitab. Here at 272analytics.com we provide data consulting primarily to graduate students. Therefore we work very closely with you in order to perfect your chapter 3 and chapter 4. That means helping you design surveys, uh, getting your data input, assisting you with fashioning appropriate research questions and hypotheses, uh, getting your data, extracting them, transforming them, cleaning them, uh, putting them through analysis, uh, interpreting them, explaining them to you so that at the end of the day you know exactly what story your data tell, why they matter, what they mean in a manner that lets you write a, a perfect chapter 4 uh, following a perfect chapter 3 and lets you defend your dissertation or thesis with complete confidence. We provide ethical consulting. It's not a writing service, so you will be responsible for taking our blueprint, our assistance, our consulting, and transforming them into an appropriate academic project for yourself. I'd also like to remind you that we provide the same services to undergraduate students who are working with quantitatively oriented assignments. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.